Yes, a lot of news to get to tonight, including a snowstorm that's just about an hour away. But first, the war in Ukraine. Ukraine reporting tonight that cruise or ballistic missiles have begun to fall in their capital of Kyiv. Meanwhile, hundreds of people inside Russia protesting the invasion were arrested today. President Biden laying down even more sanctions in an effort to deal a blow to Russia's economy and Russia's elite. Nellie Brand is at the White House with the latest. Ukrainian officials say Russian forces have taken control of the Chernobyl power plant hours after launching its invasion. The Pentagon says Russia has already fired roughly 100 missiles targeting Ukraine's military infrastructure and highly populated residential areas. Putin chose this war. And now he and his country will bear the consequences. After meetings with his national security team and then G7 world leaders, President Biden unveiled what he describes as unprecedented sanctions against Russia. We estimate that we'll cut off more than half of Russia's high-tech imports. It'll strike a blow to their ability to continue to modernize their military. It'll degrade their aerospace industry including their space program. Meanwhile, NATO says it will activate defense plans to protect its eastern flank. A U.S. defense official says around 7,000 additional U.S. troops will deploy to Germany. President Biden says he will not send U.S. forces into Ukraine. They are there to shore up NATO, though the U.S. has sent hundreds of millions of dollars in military equipment to help Ukrainians defend their country. We do not expect anyone to fight for us, but we expect all the help and all the response the West can send to us. U.S. forces in Poland have set up camps to receive refugees from Ukraine, while loved ones here in the U.S. fear for their safety. It's painful to see my family being on both sides, being in Ukraine and being in Russia. Demonstrators took to the streets around the U.S. to stand in solidarity with Ukraine. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. Meantime, the fear and frustration is real for tens of thousands of people in our area with direct ties to families and friends caught in this violent conflict. In addition to praying, their meeting and gathering donations and offering support. Alex Love spoke to several people following a meeting in Webster this evening about next steps. Alex. Well, Teresa, even though everyone we spoke with has lived around Rochester for many years, this war still hits close to home. They're calling on everyone across western New York to help by donating to their causes, but also the United States government to hear their pleas and act. My message is to President Biden, to my president, to help our nation and country to survive. Emotions ran high outside the Ukrainian Culture Center in Webster as people like Polina Kolomoits, whose direct family resides in the eastern part of Ukraine, fears the Russians will show little to no mercy against civilians. I don't have connection to them uh, for about 12 hours, and it's been crazy. It's mentally difficult for everybody, and you... How can you imagine that somebody will come into your home and we will kill you because you are speaking Ukrainian language? For over an hour, leaders of the local Ukrainian churches, culture center, and people sat in a private meeting coming up with ways they can help those in their homeland stay alive, but need the help of all Western New Yorkers. We want to do a lot of fundraising and uh, talking to uh, local and uh, state and national politicians to make sure that um, everything is done from a political standpoint as is, is much as possible to help the Ukrainians out there. Spread legitimate news and spread legitimate places of where if you want to donate money or supplies, uh, you know where to donate it. So and anything helps, you know, even if it's five dollars. Locals who immigrated from Ukraine like Sofia Kreminska caution Vladimir Putin may not stop with Ukraine. Never say never. You you don't know how things can wind up on your shore in some way, shape, or form. And if we really care about democracy, I think those are, are, are good enough reasons. Those at this meeting we spoke to explained they don't want to see U.S. troops on the ground in Ukraine, but call on President Joe Biden to issue harsher economic sanctions on Vladimir Putin. Teresa? Alex, thank you. If you would like to help, donations are already being accepted through Rock Madan. The nonprofit is accepting money and supplies to help their cause. Head over to rockmadan.org.